Welcome to It's a Crime, I'm Linda and today we're going to be talking about Holly Clark. She's been missing for three weeks. She's a 27 year old Canadian woman who went missing on January 11th in Hamilton, Ontario. Now she was last seen at 4 p.m. leaving her house on Sanford Avenue North and Cannon Street East. Now yesterday there was a new lead. There is new video footage the same day that she disappeared. I want to make that clear because some people are getting it confused. This new video was the same day on January 11th. It's actually 50 minutes later from when she was last seen. So this image was at 4 p.m. as news states it's 4 p.m. from her house. And 50 minutes later she was seen walking down the street in the rain. This new video was submitted on January 29th and it was released yesterday, January 31st. Now the video shows Holly Clark walking on the sidewalk wearing black shoes, black pants, and carrying a full garbage bag on her back and what looks to be like she's wearing a, a garbage bag or a poncho on her body. And it is raining outside, even her hair appears to be wet. Now she's walking northbound on Wentworth Street towards Shaw and she seems to look over shoulder twice in that 13 second clip. She keeps walking and then you see her look over her shoulder and then walks again and then looks over her shoulder. Now, according to Google Maps, it's approximately a 12 minute walk from her house to the point where she was seen. Only, as I mentioned, she's seen at 4.50, which is 50 minutes later. So it begs the question, where did she stop? Where did she get that bag and what's in it, right? Since it's only that 12 minute walk, how did it take her 15 minutes to get to this point? Obviously she must have stopped somewhere. Does she normally wear a bag or a poncho when she goes out in the rain because she doesn't have a raincoat? And was she planning to walk quite a ways on foot, right? Then I found a statement on CBC News that said, that Greta, which is Holly's mother, says that they've used garbage bags as rain cover before during camping, canoe trips, and folk festivals. So that answers my question. And Dave Clark, Holly's father, said it sure gave us a lot of heart to see Holly walking along with all that determination and taking care of herself. He also says, I know people seeing their child wearing a garbage bag might be disconcerted, but she's taking care of herself. And he also says it shows she got her wits about her a little bit at least and maybe fully. We don't really know whether she's gone off after a mental breakdown or if she's completely in her right mind. This is what he's saying and I'm quoting. But she's walking along with her usual determined stride there. She's still herself. And the Clark family is asking people with dash cam footage near the area from January 11th to reach out. And the Hamilton police says we'll be doing a general search of Wentworth Street, knocking on homes and asking questions. Now in the first images from her house, there doesn't seem to be any indication of a full garbage bag. So naturally there's questions on how she got the bag and where. And looking at Google Maps, it looks like there's a few ways she could have gone, obviously. As I zoomed out, it looks like to the northeast is Toronto. And even on foot, that would be a 14 hour walk if she went straight. So I don't know. We don't know where she went. We don't know if something happened. We just don't know. All the important thing is, is that Holly is found and she's safe. So according to CBC News, here's what clues they have so far. A window pane beneath Holly's room, which sits above a storefront, was boarded up after she shattered it, trying to enter her home on January 10th, the day before she left. And it says it may have been out of fear strangers were following her. She told her parents two men chased her through the forest days earlier. Her roommates say they called 911 worried about her mental health, spurring Holly's brother and sister, Caleb and Kate, to travel from Toronto to visit. But Holly was upset before that, it says. She was coping after a breakup with her guitar player boyfriend and the end of her band, part of why she moved to Hamilton from Toronto in October 2019. And just for those of you who don't know, Holly grew up and lived in Calgary. She moved out east to pursue a singing career or a music career. And this is why they're saying 
the end of her band and that she's moving from Hamilton to Toronto in October. So it also says on January 11th, she called her family begging for a plane ticket back home. Her parents missed the call. Now you can see in one of my previous videos that I'll put right there that she leaves a voice message saying that she really wants to go home, she really wants a plane ticket, and she'd really appreciate the plane ticket. And her parents told her, I'm gonna come and come get you. Now CBC also states that this is the facts they have so far, that surveillance footage from about 4 p.m. shows Holly leaving her home wearing a black long sleeve shirt, black pants, and black boots. She was upset, distraught, and in crisis. And then it also says, besides some money, she left behind her coat, her phone, and almost other belongings. And her family hasn't seen her since. Now that one line about the money, besides some money, she left behind her coat, her phone, and almost other belongings. Was she taking a quick walk and then just gonna come right back? How do people know that she took some money? How, do, how much money did she have on her? These are just some comments that I think about. It's also been said she did have some money and would have been able to travel some distance. So clearly they know that there's a certain amount of money that she'd be able to afford traveling. But again, there's no mention about how much. And it also says her bank account has not been touched. So that's another important thing. Now, it's my understanding from many, many articles that I've read from news sources that Holly was in distress when she left. And she mentioned two guys chasing her through the woods. And I just want to touch on this again, uh, maybe a little more in depth. It is super scary to have somebody chasing you and somebody going after you. Some people might take it as no big deal, but you should never take it as no big deal because it, it is a huge deal. I know because I've experienced this, I've experienced a stalker and it's not fun. It's scary, it's invasive, you feel like you have to constantly look over your shoulder. So these things that is coming out, she says two men are chasing her, she breaks into her own place, possibly out of fear because she's being looked at or chased or she feels like somebody's looking at her. I know the feeling. For me, when I parked my car, I ran so fast from the car to the house because I was scared you know what, like I was freaking out. And I didn't sleep for months, months and months and months, and it just made me absolutely go crazy. It's not a great experience. So I can say with 100% accuracy how scary that is. So if she felt like two men were chasing her and she felt like she had to break in her own home and she feels like she had to leave because she's scared, that all lines up. That's my opinion. I really hope she's safe. I really hope she's just somewhere hiding out because she's freaking out and she doesn't know, you know, what to do and all this attention might make her feel, it might make her feel that it exposes her more to the men who are chasing her. I just want to put it out there because it's a possibility. It's a possibility she's freaking out because now her name's out there and they know her identity even more. I'm super passionate about this because it's happened to me. I don't know Holly. I don't know Holly personally. I don't know. But only from what I read and the fear that was in when she made the phone call and she left the voicemail, I heard, and all these things, it is scary. So I just want to give that as my opinion because maybe, just maybe, this is what it's all about and it's not turned into a horrible horror story. I just really wanted to put it out there because I know it said over and over that Dave Clark, and Dave, if you're watching this, I know you've said that you're trying to get into Holly's head and what she may be thinking, which would might help you to where she would be. Now, in a poster I read uh, that's on the Holly Clark search page on Facebook, it has a pinned information poster, and it says on there that if you do see her to call 911 because she's most likely scared of strangers, which makes me think I doubt she would hitchhike if she's freaked out of strangers. So 
I guess she'd be on foot. It's not clear, not one news report said if she owns a car or owned a car or if she does everything on foot or transit, if she's even used to being on transit, there's absolutely no news like that. So I'm not able to help out in that way. If you do have any information, of stuff that I didn't cover in this video, you are more than welcome to email me. I can put the email below in the description. You can also comment on this video, whatever it takes. I want everybody to work together. If I'm not saying something right, or if I'm giving what you think is misinformation, all the information I'm getting is from the news. I'm not going into any Facebook groups and, and hearsay and all that stuff. I'm just putting everything that I'm getting from the news and from Dave Clark and his wife and the police. Now there is a fundraiser happening on Thursday, February 6th at 7.30 p.m. Easter time at the Corktown Pub in Hamilton. You can find that on Facebook. I'll also leave it in the description below. Anyone with information can call the police at 905-546-3816. And the Clark family is also accepting tips at bringhollyhome2020 at gmail.com. And I'll also leave the Holly Clark search uh, Facebook page link also in the description. Please share this video to as many people as you can and share it to the Facebook group if you can as well. I would really appreciate that and I know they will too. Give a thumbs up to this video. Give a little comment below of your thoughts. I am happy to read them as long as it's classy and as long as it's nice. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.